Hello, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about paints. Um, this was my very first watercolour paint set that I had when I was about eight. And it's Rowley Georgian, that's its original little box. That's kind of what it looks like. That's not the original brush. This is one that um, I think we tried to make after I lost the original little brush that went in the tub. Um, from that, when I came back to painting, I had things like this. This is a Dale Aroni and this is a Windsor & Newton Cotman. Now, as you can see, these are a bit grubby and they've been used, some colours more than others. Uh, lots of these have replaced the pans, so they aren't the original pans. That's the good thing about these, you can take them in and out. These are a bit stuck in now and would take some work to get them in and out. Now, all of these, this is a set I have around that is a set similar to what I use when I'm working with primary schools because they're very affordable for schools to use, um, but they aren't too chalky. And some of the paints that you get give a very chalky finish once they dry. So these are kind of what you call student quality. These are kind of student quality. These, I don't know if they would class as student quality, but they can still work. They have less pigment in them. Uh, they can be less intense. They can behave a little bit differently. They can give less of a finish, but they're great to start out with. And that's where I started out. They're all what are called pan paints. So you buy them and they're in the plastic pan, the, the kind of the little bit that sits in here, and they are ready for you to use. Lots of people take their set and they spray it with water. Now, I didn't, and you can kind of see why on this set. Um, this has gone away wet and has, this is the paint has slid onto here. But sometimes I had quite full pans um, and when they were sprayed, they would spread into the other colours. And that could be because I was spraying them and making them too wet. It could have been the brand of paint. It could have been all kinds of things. But I just didn't like doing that. So what I would tend to do is I would just wet the top with my brush and then leave them. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I use an old brush to do that so that I don't damage the bristles. But you can totally spray them to get them ready and to sort of activate them and make them soft and ready for you to use. Now, since coming back to painting fairly recently, the last, oh gosh, five or more years, I actually bought some paints that were in pans, like this particular one. And this is uh, Windsor & Newton uh, Sap Green, this one is. And they come in the pan and you can see actually that when this has got hot, I took it on holiday and it got left on the windowsill, it got very hot and it kind of expanded. And this is another reason I don't spray them because if I were to spray that, uh, in a palette, it would kind of dribble everywhere because it's going past its edges. And when it gets wet, it gets softer. That's why you wet it to make it easier to pick the colour off. I have dogs in my house. And although I do cover my palette, I keep getting dog's hairs in the paint and they dry in, which is a little bit annoying. So if you do have pets, remember to put your lid on. I keep forgetting. So I had some pans like that that came already in hard. And then I started to move over into tubes. Now, I'm just gonna grab one of these. I'm gonna grab just a big one. So this is a tube of yellow. It's nickel titanate yellow, and it's a Daniel Smith watercolor. Now these are professional quality watercolors, so they have more, um, more pigment in them. So this is a pan, and I've squeezed in, and I tend to only half fill them and then I've let it go hard. It takes a good couple of days for them to dry off and then I use it like that when it's hard. If I use this colour straight from the tube by squeezing it onto a palette, the colour would be much, much, much more intense. So if I pop a little bit onto here, and I'm popping it into a clean palette because I won't waste it. If I squeeze it onto here, I can use it like that but I can also let it dry and I can come back and re-wet it. But I just want to show you the difference 
in these two colours. So I'm just going to grab a stir spotter. I'm just going to wet that brush and I'm going to just take the edge of this. Now you can see that's a creamy mix. Okay, I'm just going to paint. Okay, that's a very intense colour for watercolours. I go into my pan and I go around see the difference it looked like I picked up an awful lot of paint it's a much watery mix so often when I'm using a pan I'll pick it up I'll pop it into the well and I'll add however much or little water I want to now if I go for what looks like a similar mix to that first one it's probably that But I can see straight away that this is actually less pigment, it's paler than this. It's got more water in it because this is still darker and this is wetter. Watercolours lighten as they dry. So what you can see is if you're using it straight from the tube and I want to get a really intense colour, I can go as far as getting something like this. Now to me, that's very opaque. It's nearly applying the watercolour without any water. So that's the diff the biggest difference between using straight from the tube and using a dried hard pan. One of the things that I love about watercolour is the translucency. So for me, I like to use them quite watery, like that, and build it up. So this colour would be far too intense. I'd have to take it out and I'm just picking up plain water onto my brush and dripping it in. And I'd have to make a really watery mix. And you can see I'm getting closer. A little bit goes a really long way. So that's the, the difference between the tube and the pan and how that can work for you. Now, on my pan, because it's one I filled as well, I don't have any information. I've got the name, but it's wearing off. And I've got the number. I put the number on and I swatch. I love to swatch. Swatching is great fun. And these are how I swatch. I have a, a rectangle of paper and I put the number on, I put the name on, and then I do a really thick, bright, kind of highly pigmented, not very much water mix. Add a little bit more water, do another stripe, add a little bit more water, more water, and I keep doing that until basically you can barely see the colour. So if I go and find, I need to find 85. So this one starts at 82, 84, there it is. Nickel titanate yellow. And you can see I've got some other things written on here. And I've actually got some things written over here on the back. On the front it says PY53. This tells me that the P stands for pigment, pigment the Y stands for yellow, and the 53 is the number of that pigment. So this paint is made with a yellow pigment number 53. Those pigment numbers are consistent across all the paints, whereas the name won't be. You may not find in Windsor and Newton something called nickel titanate yellow, but you can look at all of their paints and see if there's a paint made with the same pigment. Now this particular yellow only has one pigment in it. And that's why for my swatches, I have it written on the front. Single pigments, when you mix them, can often give brighter, cleaner colours. So if I were making an orange with this yellow and a single pigment red, I might get a better result than if I was mixing a red that had lots of different red pigments to make it up and a yellow that had lots of different yellow pigments to make it up. So it's useful to know. On the back, I've got some other bits I've got LF1 non-staining granulates and semi-transparent these are all the things that I need to know about the paint LF1 means light fast one so how light fast means how much it is likely to lose its color if it's exposed to natural light over a period of time and you get ratings that are numbers and you get ratings that are words. 
and for paints you're looking for you know paints that won't fade you don't want to do a painting that's going on the wall and to have it fade and you know the colors to all change and become really muted or different to how you intended them to be you want it to be able to last the non-staining means that it's probably fairly easy to lift off the paper. It's not going to stain the fabric of the paper and leave traces of itself. There are some colours that are staining and once they're on the paper, it's much harder to lift them off and leave no white at all behind them. When I'm saying lift them up, what I mean is that if I wet the that, and then I take something like a clean cloth and I press, that mostly you can take all the colour off with a little bit of care. My water is a bit grubby, so it may not take it all off. And my cloth could do with a bit of a wash. However, you can see that the vast majority is totally picking up and it's not leaving anything behind it. When we talk about the transparency, you've got paints that are totally transparent um, paints that are semi-transparent and paints that are opaque. An opaque paint is one that doesn't allow the colours underneath it to show through. Semi-transparent allows a little bit to show through and transparent allows lots to show through. I really like transparent paints and I like semi-transparent paints. There are one or two opaque paints I like but I have to be careful how I use them because they can kind of give it an almost dull feel um, to watercolours. It's good to know about. The last one is probably the one I use the most and that's granulating. Now this particular paint is, is granulating and it granulates. And that means you get kind of little, little dots of, of um, texture in the paint. Now another paint that I've got that granulates quite beautifully is Let's see if I can get the right one on my paint palette. I'm going to just pull the pan out so I can check the name. This one's Bloodstone Genuine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little stripe on there. I'm going to add a little bit of water so hopefully you will start to see what happens with this as we... Can you see that there are little particles almost suspended in the paint. I'm just going to zoom you in so that you can have a good look at that. So if you can see there, you can see there's little dots. That's essentially what granulating is. It gives this lovely texture to your paint. But it can mean that getting a really fat, flat, smooth wash is quite a challenge. So knowing if it granulates or not can help you to pick what paint you want. Now all of that information is on the tube. So if you look uh, here, is it here? No, I can never find it on these tubes. Um, I've got the paint name, I've got the size, I've got the pigment colour here, the pigment here which is really important, PY53. The other parts that um, talk about the granulating, if they're not on the tube, you can look them up on the website of the manufacturer. You can also often see them on the website of where you're buying them from. I know if I go onto CasArt, I can go and look at all the Daniel Smith colours they have in their catalogue and it will tell me all about how light fast they are. It will tell me about whether they granulate or not. Lots of the big manufacturers also make kind of uh, summary sheets where it tells you the pigment colours and all of that information and you can print it out so that you can have that with you. So that is kind of a little bit about that information. Now I've done it quite quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in a link to Jackson's which is a UK paint shop that has some fantastic information and goes through it all in a lot of detail and talks to you more about things like permanence and single pigment colours 
and all of the kind of extra information in there. Ultimately, for doing mindful watercolours, it's about knowing what your paints do. And a lot of that is about actually painting with them and seeing what happens. And the biggest and most important part is the bit that I demonstrated here, and that's being able to mix a creamy mix all the way down to a really watery mix to get the different kind of colours that you can and the different intensity of the tone. And to also be really aware that with watercolours, you need to add quite a bit of water to them. They're not really intended to be used very, very thickly. You can have some fun playing with them like that, but lots of the things that we do in the classes need us to have a much waterier mix so we can see what happens when they glaze over each other or watery mixes when we're doing wet in wet that we add more pigment to bit at a time to build up the colour to the intensity we want. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.